Hey, I'm the internet privacy guy, so some ask, why am I on YouTube? Why not on library or other YouTube alternatives where I will supposedly be safer and so will my viewers? This is a good and actually complex question and I will try to answer this. And it's coming up next. Since my channel topic is internet privacy, I see a comment about the use of alternatives to YouTube in almost every video. And I'm also assuming that since many of you are privacy minded, many will purposely not subscribe to this channel for fear of tracking and profiling. So compared to the number of views, I would not be surprised if my subscriber count is lower. It would also not surprise me if many people do not comment on my videos since they watch the videos without logging into YouTube. Some of you will then feel that I'm using you all for my selfish purposes, exposing you to danger so I can be rich and famous on YouTube at the cost of people I'm supposedly here to protect. I understand this feeling and like I said, I would imagine that this is a strong feeling among some of you. And by the way, I feel really rich now making $150 from YouTube this past month after working full time on this channel. I'm going to discuss this in detail, but in all honesty, I am not afraid of YouTube. I am not afraid that YouTube will zuck you. In fact, I'm not afraid to utilize parts of the internet daily as long as I understand the risks and know how to mitigate them. For example, some of you are obsessed with cookies on your browser and those trackers. In contrast, I don't really care about cookies. I don't block cookies or disable JavaScript on my browser. These are not threats that concern me and frankly, neither do these need to concern you if you follow what I teach. Now, if after listening to this, you're still afraid of YouTube, then by all means, subscribe to me on library.tv, lbry.tv, same account, Rob Braxman Tech, same videos. The only thing that's not on a library are my live streams. Unfortunately, those are only available on YouTube. If you're on library, please subscribe to me there. Although, like I said, you shouldn't have a problem watching YouTube. So let me repeat again, based on my setup, and my planning of my own personal privacy, I have no particular fear of YouTube. Now, in contrast, there is zero possibility of me ever using Facebook Live or Instagram because those platforms bring a tracking profile that will haunt you and me forever. The entire internet is not safe, but you can blunt the privacy effects of Google and in particular, YouTube, and fortunately, they let you. If there was no workaround, I'd be out of here so fast. Although I'm new on YouTube, I'm an established broadcaster on Periscope where I have over 30,000 followers. In fact, some people have uploaded some of my videos from Periscope to YouTube, though not under my account. What's different between YouTube and let's say Facebook Live is that on Facebook, you are profiled to Gazoo with your real name your relationship circle, your ideas are tracked, your behavior, your locations, your expenditures. And this is done in unprecedented ways and people let Zuck do his evil on all of you. Now Google can do this to you as well if you come in here with your real name and don't know about the word pseudo anonymity and all the procedures I've been teaching you about this information. Let's assume that you have actually watched my videos and picked up on a little bit of my advice. You set up a fake name on YouTube. You set up an email for social media specifically that does not have your real name. You turn your location off on your devices. You use a VPN or Tor to obscure your IP address. You set up a Gmail account without your real phone number and you don't use Facebook at all or not use it on the same browser or device as YouTube. You also use DuckDuckGo or StartPage as your search engine. 
And if you're even smarter, you've used a degoogled phone or a Linux phone. And as a final step, let's say you went on Google Activity Control for your account and you turned off all the tracking on YouTube, your location and your search activity. But even if you didn't do that, it would not really be that bad at all. Now, given this kind of setup, what kind of tracking do you think will occur? All the procedures I just mentioned are part of a collection of disinformation techniques. I've just provided you with tools to make your data useless. For example, let's say a Google tracker uses cookies to track what I do. What exactly do they have? They have an unknown person with no precise location, watching a bunch of videos, and some related to privacy, maybe Linux, maybe Linus Tech Tips, maybe cute animals, maybe plumbing videos, maybe fashion videos. Okay, I get pumped some ads on the videos I watch, but those videos are based on what I'm watching recently. But again, who am I? How can I get attacked in some way if I don't have a fixed and permanent identity? In fact, all I have to do is clear cookies and all that tracking is flushed away. This is completely different if you didn't take all the precautions I teach you. Then Google has a permanent record of you because the same profile comes up with the same name, same phone number, same IP address, same location. These, folks, is the value of this information. This information makes the value of your data useless to their databases since they cannot tie it to one individual. By the way, because of GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation in the EU, Google has had to provide privacy options in Google, something that Facebook has not really done. I'm not a trusting person, so I look for evidence of good behavior. In the two years that I've been testing Google activity controls, I actually have not found occurrences of the use of my data in a context that I did not allow. Which means, when you tell Google Activity Controls to stop tracking certain things, it appears that they're conforming to their own end-user license agreement. There's a lot of financial penalties associated with this, so if they're lying, there's a big financial risk. So in the last year, I've switched my battle to phones. It appears that they don't need to track you through all those platforms so much because they do the tracking now on the phone side. And this is why a D Google phone or Linux phone is the best option. Dump your standard Android or iOS and feel free. There's still a lot to fear from people thinking they can be safe from Facebook. There are also apps that you have to worry about, especially those that collect your personal contact lists. Those alone are reasons to change your phone numbers. But listen, even if you just pause your YouTube tracking of videos watched on Google activity controls, the tracking stops. By the way, let's talk about cookie tracking for a second. Some of you are using Brave because you think the line of defense is to keep deleting cookies. But in case you didn't know this, browser fingerprinting does not need cookies. They can store your fingerprint on their servers. So the actual solution to preventing this tracking is browser isolation, which I talk about in my browser videos. Now let's assume you've been tracked by Google using either cookie trackers or browser fingerprinting. A specific test. Let's say I watched tons of gun related videos on YouTube a couple of years ago and I pause the YouTube tracking. Then I should not get a specific recommendation to watch gun videos unless I'm subscribed to that type of channel. As part of my evidence tracking, and it's been two years, I have not gotten a recommendation that I didn't expect or plan on. Meaning, I seem to be able to mold the perception of the YouTube AI. It's just a computer program after all, and you mess with the parameters, then it doesn't know what to do. The difference between Google, Facebook, and Apple is that for whatever reason, Google allows pseudo-anonymity. You can set up as many Gmail accounts as you want with no identity tied to them. 
This is what John McAfee likes about Gmail. So Google is one of the biggest trackers in the world on par with Facebook, but yet they allow identity spoofing. They allow it on Android. They allow it on Gmail and they allow it on all their properties. I don't know why they allow it. While they are, I'm okay with being on YouTube. Frankly, it's been good for me. My channel on YouTube is growing as fast as it grew on Periscope. Can I survive on library only? The problem is called discovery. People cannot discover me on library. It's good as a backup. Since I moved there in the last two weeks, I've had a couple of hundred views. I've had close to 200,000 views in the last month on YouTube. I've had 80,000 unique viewers this past month. YouTube is the second largest search engine, second only to Google search. So if I want my message to get out, I need to be on YouTube and I need people to support me and share my YouTube videos while putting this information tools I teach to use. So follow me on library if that's what you want. But just build a disinformation around your identity and use the internet freely in places where they allow identity spoofing and avoid places that are doxing havens like Facebook. They will never allow you to hide your real identity. Thank you for your support on any platform that I'm on. I'm also on my own privacy platform, Brax.me, and that's truly a trackerless location. See you again soon.